my name is Azizet. You can call me Z. Play for Barcelona. I live in Lagos. No, I live in Barcelona. No, Lagos. <laughs> Talking about my journey of football, right from the beginning, I mean, I started with my friends in school. Um, I was just doing for fun. I mean, it became something like I like to do more often. After school hours, I play football before I go home. My parents are always complaining that I come late after school hours and all that. So when I finished from my tertiary school, I had like almost months doing nothing. So I just spoke with my parents. Maybe they can just allow me to just play for fun. Just for fun, nothing serious. I mean, from there I played in a tournament. Then I was discovered by um, one of the teams there in the, playing in the tournament actually because I was just running in the stadium and then I, I found out they were playing a tournament. I played for one team, Anonymous, I don't know the team, I just played for them. And a proper team playing in the tournament saw me and liked me and said, okay, they want me to play. So I was like, no, I don't want to play professional football. It's just for fun. They said, no, you have the quality to come, you train, if you work hard, you can gain something from it. So I said, no, my parents are not going to allow me to do that up. So don't even try to, um, don't bother trying, you know. There are a couple of moments I can still remember vividly because um, there were funny moments. Now I smile over them, I laugh over them, but um, before I couldn't because <laughs> they were like difficult moments for me, like days where I would go out on Sunday mornings to play with my friends and my dad comes out to maybe just chill with his friends and it's the same spot because I usually play on the street anyway. So not a proper football pitch, it's like a street, a tired street. So once my dad is coming, I always run to hide from him, you know, and my friends, if you ask my friend, where is it? And they'd be like, no, we've not seen her today. <laughs> when I was growing up, um, my parents did support me, obviously. Um, the only person who was, um, was supportive was my grandmother, you know. She, although she's not alive today, gave me a so rest in peace, but she was the only person in my family, even when I go out and my mother wants to beat me or my dad wants to beat me or they say, we're not going to give you food today because you went to play football, you're supposed to be doing other things. She was the only person that was there for me. She's going to feed me. Even, she's going to tell me, don't let your mom see that I'm giving you food. Don't let your mom know I gave you money or whatever, you know. So when I play at the biggest stage today, I just remember all the time that, I mean, I wish she's still alive to, to see me play professional, but I'm, I'm pretty sure she's proud of me. I grew up in an environment where um, you don't get to have a lot of female players playing football. As time goes on, growing from the team I played for in Lagos, FC Robo, to River Angels, I started picking more interest. I started becoming more passionate about it. I started seeing football as my job, as my profession. And then when I moved to Liverpool, and then I know, okay, this is my job. This is, I have to, I, I mean, I started feeling differently towards um, football, you know? So I think it's a feeling that grew um, much more bigger from time. As time goes on, I started picking more interest. I started being more passionate. I started being more serious, you know? Because the decision that I took um, like 15 years ago regarding football is not the same thing I'll take today, you know. And now, I mean, I play for FC Barcelona. It means like, what else do I want? I'm like on the biggest stage of my life. There were several times I sat down alone thinking and tell, asking myself if I was doing the right thing, if I was making the right decision if I was not going the wrong way, if um, my parents wouldn't say to me at the end of the day, oh yeah, because you didn't listen to us, this is how you end up, you know? I mean, I had um, different moments. I, I was down with this because it's like something, you, you don't know the future, you don't know what's gonna come out of it, you know? Imagine wasting two, three years of your life and they said to you, okay, if you had used this three years in school, you would have almost been done by now. You would have gotten a degree or something, you know? So yeah, there were moments I sat down alone. There were moments I, I cried sometimes because I just feel like I don't want to fail, you know? And at some, moment, at, at some point I felt like, okay, um, I love what I'm doing right now. I just want to leave, you know? But 
You don't want to let your parents down because they now give you the opportunity to do this and you don't want to let them down. So it's, it felt like a pressure to me. At some point, I felt like I have to deliver. And even if everything wasn't working that minute, I had something to push me, like I have to go more, I have to get this sorted out, you know? So, I mean, today I'm, I'm playing at the World Stage. I played at the World Cup, Champions League final. Just name it, I mean, it's just... It's absolutely emotional for me. But, yeah, I'm just happy everything worked out fine. I think with my parents, the point they said, OK, we will let you be into sports um, professionally was after my under-20s World Cup, when I had the golden ball and the golden boot. So um, I think that was one of the moments I felt really happy in my whole life, because they said to me, OK, um, now we realize you have this talent, and we're not going to let you die. They said, OK, this is the gift they want to give me. So. Now they're happy, my father, everyone likes to wear my jersey everywhere because they're proud, you know. So it's been um, pretty interesting these days with the fam. Now my family, they are like my biggest supporters, especially my, my parents, both of them. Now my mom watches football. She, my mom has a Facebook account. She watches um, Barcelona game because it's always live on Facebook, most of the games. So my family, even when we played in the Champions League final, um, because my younger ones, they don't really know much about football. So they were just happy I scored. I was, like, I was telling them, look, I did, we didn't win the cup. I say yes, but you scored, you know. Now I have a foundation and it was, um, basically in support of only a girl child, not because I don't care about the male, but because I think the environment and the society, uh, when it comes to sport, they are always more supportive to the male athletes than the female athletes, you know? So for me, this is like a strong point for me. I, I, I can tell my story to these kids. I can play back everything that happened with my life to them and advise them and talk to them, you know? I'm just gonna say like, Go for your dream, I mean, pursue it. Try to stay 100% focused, don't, don't give up. I don't care about what anyone says. If it's you, it's you, just do you, be yourself. Give 100% support to yourself, be your own number one supporter, be your own number one motivation, because if you don't motivate yourself, you can't get the energy from other people as well, you know? This is just me telling people, be yourself and give 100% for everything you want to do. You don't wait for people to give you credit. You have to credit yourself. If you're not doing good, you tell yourself, okay, I have to buckle up. And if you're doing good, you tell yourself, yes, I'm, I'm good at what I do. I'm, I'm, I'm improving every day, you know? And along the line, the journey is like um, a roller coaster. Sometimes it's not just all smooth, you know? You have um, times where things are not working out. You have times where um, some things are not even right for you. And you just have to stay locked in, you just have to stay strong and I mean for me when I was at Arsenal it wasn't that my best moment and all that but I mean I moved to China a lot of people said a lot of things about me but I, st I told myself this is what I want to do I want to get myself back up there I have to go somewhere to do this and all of that I did what I had to do and back I'm here in Barcelona today so that's a perfect example of being strong not listening to people if I had listened to people, maybe I would have taken a decision that would not be helpful for my career. So being strong is, um, you just have to be your own um, best support system because if you don't do this, then it's going to be difficult for other people to do that for you.